Hello, fabulous Sagittarius. Welcome to your horoscope for the month of February 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing month it is. We have an active and fabulous sky playing out for us right now. And it is right around the ninth of the month that we are going to have this month's full moon. This full moon is happening in fellow fire sign Leo. It is speaking in supreme harmony with Mars still in your sign at that point. And it is going to be this very energy that speaks to you truly feeling as if the world is opening up to you in meaningful ways. Full moons tend to bring with them culmination and fruition. They bring with them the sense of completion after you've put in time or put in effort. They bring together honesty and answers. And so for you, this full moon is happening in a part of the sky that has to do with your place in the world. It has to do with long distance travel, immigration, citizenship, higher learning, legal matters, political matters. All of that is covered here, as well as your philosophical understanding of your place in the world and being in front of more people than you have before. Now, when it comes to a full moon, as I said, something comes to fruition at this time. And for you, if it is that you've been either looking into travel or wanting to do some traveling, or if it is that you are involved in an immigration or citizenship matter, it is gonna be at this time that moves are made. And very likely it'll start to feel as if you are asked to act very quickly, but it's all with a sense of closure being very near. And for some, it will be as if a long-standing matter finally is coming to a close and you are feeling invigorated as a result. Now, if it is that you're in an institute of higher learning, your studies are going to come very much into focus. If you work in one of these places, well, chances are you'll be spending a lot more time at work focused on the tasks at hand. If you've been involved in a legal matter, it is going to be this full moon that helps to bring things to fruition. Again, because Mars is speaking to the full moon, things could move very quickly. You're being asked to act quickly as well, perhaps a little impulsively, but ultimately it looks like you are feeling a sense of momentum and a sense of high energy that is inspiring you to take action and to take action quickly to bring things to a conclusion. Now, I would also add with this, because there's a philosophical understanding of this part of the sky, this is when your own beliefs could be powerfully illuminated. If it is that you're hoping to step onto a bigger stage than you've known before, perhaps present yourself and your work to more people than you have before, well, it is going to be this very full moon that encourages bravery and perhaps even impulsive action, but it looks like it leads to greater blessings. Now, as we navigate late into the month, it is right around the 23rd that we will have this month's new moon. This new moon will be happening in a part of the sky for you that has to do with your home and your family of origin. It is this part of the sky that represents the foundations to your life and the ground on which you stand, your past, your perception of it, and even your ancestors are covered here as well. Now, this is a new moon. It brings with it new opportunities. So for some, it may very well be that moving, buying, selling, new roommate, these are the types of scenarios that arise at this time. But keep in mind, a week before the new moon, it is Mercury that goes retrograde in the same part of the sky. Just when you think you're making progress, it may be that you have to go back and look at contracts or, you know, check out some details more deeply that maybe you hadn't appreciated before. And so as much as a new moon does bring new opportunity because of that Mercury retrograde, I would say that if it is that by surprise, an opportunity comes back around. Again, it could be related to where you live, but it might also be related to a matter having to do with your family of origin, your parents in particular. Perhaps it's a chance for you to visit home in some way or just spend more time with family. Well, if those opportunities come up and they feel like they are reappearing, well, that is when you're working to the best of Mercury retrograde energy. But where it is that you're going in brand new directions, like if you go to check out a house and you're sure that this is the house for you and you haven't seen this house before, that's where you wanna be careful. 
especially around the days of the new moon. If it is that you made an offer before and it didn't go through, well, it may very well be this new moon that allows that offer to come back around. If it is that you were hoping for a new understanding with a member of your family and it felt as if that opportunity or that option was kind of gone and you just kind of made peace with it, well, this may very well be a chance to talk it out again or look at it again in hopes to create and to move towards that deeper bonding with your family member. And where it is that you're hoping to look at the past with different eyes, to forgive the past more deeply, well, this energy is perfect to do that, to help you to realize that you are moving into a future truly free of the bonds of the past that perhaps before this new moon you felt were holding you back. Now, where it comes to matters of love, it will be right around the sixth of the month that Venus will change signs, moving into fellow fire sign Aries. I love this energy for you. This is a part of the sky that has to do with flirtation. It has to do with romance and it has to do with you feeling open to love, enjoying love that much more. If you are open to meeting someone new, there's a couple of ways I see the energy playing out uh, this particular month. So one, of course, is that placement of Venus, which will open up about four weeks of blessings, allowing you to get your flirt on that much easier. However, Mercury retrograde, and Mercury is the ruling planet of your opposite sign, and so wherever Mercury goes, it evokes partnership in one way or another for you. Well, it is going to be Mercury retrograde at the very foundation of your chart that speaks to the past. That means you may very well be looking at the past where it comes to matters of love. So you are going to want to pay a little bit of attention to that to see where it is that perhaps you're seeing the past more nostalgically or more importantly, where it is that forgiveness needs to happen of the past so that you can move into the future of greater love than you've known before. For those of you who are just starting to date someone, this placement of Venus is lovely. In fact, it is ideal where it comes to getting to know someone new, doing fun things together, uh, and overall enjoying their company enjoying the feeling of new love or possible new love. Venus is going to help in that regard. At the same time though, where it is that any loose ends, whether within you and in your spirit or otherwise, need to be tied up having to do with your romantic past, well, this sky may help you to do just that. For those of you who are in an established bond, I really like this placement of Venus. I feel like it is going to be this energy that helps you to understand and embrace these light moments that can happen uh, at this time. It's not always uh, the case that, especially when you're living with somebody, if you've been in an established bond for a really long time, it's easy for things to become more routine. Well, I do think that with this placement of Venus, it will remind you of the things that you fell in love with with this person. It'll help you to appreciate the romance and the love that is there, as well as your partner being that much more romantic as well. What I love about this month for you, well, look, there's a lot here, but I'm actually going to say, I do love all the fire energy playing out for you this month. Like I love that full moon in fellow fire sign Leo, and it is happening in a part of the sky for you that your sign has a natural correlation to. And so we say in astrology, and if you're a student of astrology, a, a good way to understand and learn the chart more deeply is to consider not only Sagittarian energy, but how that could correlate to or evokes the ninth house in some way. Well, this full moon happening in your ninth house actually is an area that's that much more important to you, your place in the world. It's one of those um, very important questions that you move towards answering more and more over the course of this lifetime, whether that's philosophically, whether that's literally. At the same time, with that Venus moving into fellow fire sign Aries, I just think that this sky is set up so nicely for you to feel in your element. And for some Sagges out there, it'll feel like it's been a long time since you've gotten there. But once you are back in that space where you're really feeling like you, and again, you're riding your own element, well, it is going to be a return to self in a way that also returns a spirit of fun to you now. 
Well, thank you so much for watching. You can get a video like this every week by logging on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. It'll be a great month. Enjoy.